Do you ever have to wear one of these? Uh, all right. It's not quite as bad as using glass. All right. So, uh, so my name is Kevin Grant, and I'm here to talk to you about material design. Uh, but I'm not going to give you the lecture that you heard maybe from the Google I.O. conference on what material design is. I hope that many of you have already have sort of encompassed yourselves in what material design is and, and got a little bit out of that from earlier this year. Uh, but to start off, I want to talk about, or explain to you why you should listen to me about this material design stuff. I'm going to give you a lot of information and I'm going to say a lot of things, uh, but you might want to know why, why I'm credible for this. I, I got my computer science degree uh, from the University of Nevada in America, and um, as soon as I graduated, I moved to Sweden, and I lived in Malmo for about two years, working at a startup company there. They ultimately went out of business, but uh, I worked with some great guys there. Uh, recently, I, I authored a book on beginning Android development with, uh, with my friend at Tumblr, who's my manager. Uh, before Tumblr, I worked on a big application I had about between 10 and 50 million downloads on the Google Play Store. I'm not allowed to say what it was uh, due to my contract, but that application has a 4.2 star rating, and I built that from the ground up. Uh, after I finished that application, I started working at Tumblr because they wanted me to do some of the same things there. So I've work, been working on the Tumblr app for about two years, where we have also in the 10 to 50 million download range, uh, and we're holding, holding strong at a 4.4 star rating. Uh, and as you've heard from the other guys earlier today, your, your star rating, unfortunately, is, is extremely important to your managers. Uh, all right, so, uh, also. <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave that there. <laughs> uh, so today we're gonna talk about a few things. Uh, I'm gonna give you a, a, a brief statistics. We heard a little bit about it already, about what Android stats are looking at right now. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about being a conformist. And what does being a conformist mean? I'm going to briefly explain to you what design is, since we're talking a lot about design and a lot of these other talks we're hearing, what is design? Uh, but design is a pretty overloaded word, so we want to make sure that we clarify it. And then finally, the title of the talk, uh, what don't the bigwigs on Wall Street want me to know? What are they hiding from us? So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what they've been hiding from you from this whole time. Lastly, we'll talk about a little bit about materials, and then we're going to go over some things that you can do today. So make sure that you have a takeaway for your applications. Uh, so some stats. You heard it earlier, min SDK 15. Uh, definitely, if you want to do min SDK 14, there's no point. Uh, so just bump it to 15 now. Uh, KitKat is, is doing pretty good. This is just uh, from all applications, uh, our total downloads. 32% uh, of our total downloads in the Tumblr app are on KitKat which is pretty spectacular. If you've been doing Android development for any amount of time, uh, this is pretty great. You know, iOS gets 97% you know, adoption within the first week, and we have 30% adoption within the first two years. Uh, so I think this is, a, this is a time to be alive, great time to be alive. But actually, even better, uh, our daily downloads are at 44% on KitKat. So that's actually, that's a great number. That's, that's really what I want to see. 44% of our new users coming in every day, they are on KitKat. So, so thank goodness that uh, we, can, we can put the past behind us. So really what, what this is trying to say is the best time to be an Android developer is right now. If, you, if, you, if you're new in this room or you haven't been doing Android development for long, well, that's great news because now is the best time. A lot of us in this room are also veterans, uh, but all the experience we have with, with this thing called gingerbread and, and uh, honeycomb, that's useless. And I wish I didn't have to take up brain space for it. So you're lucky that you don't have to know any of that because it doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. The best time is now. So, I'm going to talk about being a conformist. And I'm going to say that I was once like, like many of you. Um, I'm what I like to call a a design guidelines conformist. Have any of you ever taken a look at the design guidelines before? There's some pretty good guidelines there, let me tell you. But what does it mean to be a conformist? Well, I'll tell you, it's like, what the guideline says is what my application should do. My action bar should be 48 dp tall. I should have an up icon. I should only have the drawer icon on my root navigation hierarchy. Uh, I should have a 48 dp rhythm without my, throughout my entire application. Uh, there's a lot of different things that goes into being a, into those design guidelines. But what happens when we, we follow those design guidelines so closely? 
When we get designers or your CEO will come to you and they'll say, can we, can we change the color of the menu? I said, uh, no, there is no uh, set menu action bar color uh, API. We don't need that. Uh, what about the size of the action bar? Like, technically, I could change the size of the action bar, but it, it's, it's that size for a reason. Like, let's not, let's not mess with it. Uh, what, well, can we animate the text in? No. I don't have access to the text view for the title. Like, no, we're not, we're not animating that thing at all. Like, just leave it how it is. Or maybe, can we modify the dialogues at all? Are the dialogues, can we put a custom color on those? No. If, if Google wanted us to do this, uh, there would be an API for it. Like, if I was meant to do this, it would be easy. So let, let's just stick with what we were meant to do, what the guidelines said we were supposed to do. Uh, that's what I would say. And then they would come back at me and, as you know, many of you know, Android developers are in high demand. And what you say, what you say goes. If you say it's too hard, if you say it's not gonna work, who's gonna argue with you? You're in the most highest demand job in the world right now. Uh, clearly, you know what you're talking about. So, just do the best you can. And then you, uh, you get what you want. Uh, you get an app that adheres to the guidelines. Uh, you get an app that works across all different screen sizes. It looks exactly like the application that Google would have made for you. Uh, it's perfect. Um, but that's it. That's really the end of, of the, the guidelines story. I, I made a, the first application I, I had mentioned that I, I had built from scratch. It was alive in the App Store for about eight or nine months. Uh, and I followed the guidelines perfectly. And now they released a new version of the application that I didn't work on. And it looks absolutely, completely different. And there's nothing left in that application that I made because I didn't do anything special in it. There's nothing, there's no memorable pieces. I didn't do anything cool in there. I followed the guidelines exactly like Google told me to. Uh, and now all my work is gone. So let's uh, bow our heads in silence. <sighs> that's okay. I think I learned a lesson from that. And part of the problem, part of the lesson that I learned is that I didn't actually know what design was. I thought design meant, I thought design meant following the guidelines. Like these are, these are the guidelines that were given to me. This is what good design is. Good design means that you follow the rules to a T. You followed every single one. You implemented every margin exactly like you were supposed to. Uh, but it's, a funny thing that I learned is that that's not actually what design means. Design actually means something completely different. Design is completely unrelated to design guidelines. Maybe, maybe many of you think like this. I'm, I'm not a designer. I can't draw. I can't draw either, let me tell you. That's a, that's a skill that I, I lost way early in my elementary schooling. Uh, I thought I was gonna be a great artist someday, but it didn't, didn't work out that way. Uh, but it's okay, because you don't have to be a good artist or a good drawer to, to be a good designer, or to be any type of designer. Because there's actually multiple types of design. Design means three, three different things and possibly more. Uh, some great, some higher level buckets we have, however, are, are there's visual design, there's interaction design, and there's product design. Visual design is sort of the, are we here? Are we good? All right. So visual design, this is probably what most of us attribute to design when we hear people talk about design. This just doesn't look good. This, this has a lot of characteristics. It has typography, colors, you know, graphics. You're just look and feel. Make sure it feels cohesive throughout the whole application. This is, a, this is a lot of what people are thinking good design is, just graphic design. But it goes beyond that, because we have interaction design as well, and don't confuse the two. Interaction design is your, your, your wireframes, your prototyping, deciding which screen should lead to which next screen, which navigation structure to use. That has absolutely nothing to do with your visual design, but it has everything to do with the type of design that your application needs. Interactive designers will make sure that your apps are intuitive, they'll make sure that you have a great navigation hierarchy, the transitions make sense, and even that you have animations that work together that make sense for your whole product. And that gets us into the last one, which is product design. And that's, is this valuable? Does this make sense for what we're doing right now? Uh, a lot of what I'm gonna talk about Probably doesn't make sense for your, your bank application. Uh, I have handles banking, and uh, I wish that they would take some of my advice. It's probably the worst design website I've ever used, or application. But beyond that, 
Your product design should determine what's valuable for you, and they've decided that user interaction is not valuable for Handles of Lincoln. Uh, but for a lot of other applications, for your apps, they should, your product designer will determine what's valuable, what's useful, and if what you're building makes sense. For example, I'm wearing a watch. Uh, it's not probably a really great watch design that my watch needs to connect to my toaster. Uh, I can do that myself. Uh, I can use my phone for that. So really, uh, your product designer is helping create this cohesive vision. And what you need to know is that design can mean many of these things, and you don't have to do all of them yourself. If you're not a good graphic designer, or if you're not a good UX designer, that's okay. You can, you can take one or all of these roles and find other people to help you fill those roles yourself. So now we know what design means, but now what is what don't they really want us to know? Like, what, what about this material design stuff have they really been hiding from us? This picture might look familiar if you've been going through the design guidelines recently. Uh, is this material design? It has, we have round avatars, we've got a floating action button. It looks pretty, pretty materially. What about this? Is, is Allie Connors here? Is she part of material design? With uh, these accented colors and colored status bars? Because when I go through those slides in Google I.O., this looks a lot like material design. Uh, what about this? Is it this grid view with these cards? We have the floating action button again. Is this what material design really means? What about this piece of aluminum that has lines on it? Is this materials design? This is probably the most material thing that's in this presentation. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know. What if I told you that a lot of the things that we're attributing to material design, the things that we're trying to make our application strive for right now, they aren't really new. And what if I told you that a lot of these pieces, nearly all of them, have been right under our noses this entire time? What about the card layout? We talked about, we just saw that maybe card layout means material design. Uh, Etsy has been using the card layout for a long time. Actually, they have released a, a library called the Stagger Grid View which many applications are utilizing for having staggered grids in their applications. Pinterest has it, even, even Google Plus has it. Google Plus has had staggered grids for a couple years now. Uh, so that's not really material design. There's nothing special or unique about that. And the shadows, you can put a shadow on anything. Just put some PNGs behind it. Uh, are round avatars material design? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, if they are, it's certainly not new. Vine's had them for pretty much its inception. Pinterest again has them. Instagram, Instagram has round avatars. Uh, scene transitions, maybe we, these new fancy scene transitions in L uh, that lets you animate views from one screen to another. We had that in the Tumblr app earlier this year before we even knew that there was gonna be such a thing as this uh, animation thing. So scene transitions aren't really new. I've seen other applications doing it as well. Accent colors, I listen to a lot of podcasts. This is my favorite podcasting app that has has been using accent colors, extracting a primary color from the album art or from the podcast art to use within the UI there. Uh, we didn't need material design for that. This has been around for a long time. I mean, more, we have the floating action button. Floating action button, also an extremely popular paradigm uh, that's been in a lot of applications. Path, uh, Tumblr, we've had it. Foursquare used to have it, they took it out. Uh, even chat heads, you could consider part of a uh, different way of representing the floating action button. Back arrows, uh, this Instagram. Did anybody remember when Instagram released this update earlier this year and uh, everybody went like crazy at how poorly designed this application was? They said, excuse me, sir, sir, you can't put back arrows in an Android application. That's what they do on iOS. You can't, you can't have back arrows in an Android app. Uh, well, now we have back arrows uh, as part of the framework. It's funny how, how things work out that way. Uh, yeah. So when I take a look at all of these applications that we just went through, I'm actually seeing a lot of material design. I'm seeing a lot of material design in pretty much all these applications. And these have been around well before Google I.O., uh, well before this material design nonsense that they came up with. Uh, but then, you must be thinking, dang, you're right. It has been around a while. And what do we, what do we even need it for? Well, a lot of these developers have, put in, have been putting a lot of development to get their applications looking like this. There's a lot of what I call FTK development. It's your face to the keyboard, like over and over again, to, make, to get these things working absolutely right. 
And also these solutions, they don't work on all platforms. So I know that when you're making something, you're like, oh, well, it works great on my Nexus 5 and Galaxy S4, but it doesn't work on like the Sony Xperia like 2.7 inch phone when I put it in landscape. It's okay, you know, it doesn't have to work on that phone. You can have fallback behavior or it can just look broken. Uh, because nobody really has that phone. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't be that guy. All right, so the solutions, they don't always work. And I know you want them to work everywhere, but they don't always work. Uh, and a lot of these developers, they're criticized for being different. They did a lot of these things before it was cool. That back arrow is, is my favorite the, in Instagram. They had that back arrow and everybody hated on it. And now all of a sudden everybody forgot all the hate because now it's just a material design application. We'll get back to their, uh, Someone will get back to their bottom action bar someday. I wouldn't be surprised if like Google changes their mind on the bottom action bar eventually in the future too. But what this is going to, what this says, however, is that if you create your own design pattern, if you do something unique in your application, there's a good chance that other people will follow it if it's a good idea. All of those things that we just saw, the, the material design team looked at it and said, hey, that's actually a pretty good idea. That works pretty well with what we're trying to say. Uh, they figured it out. Maybe, maybe we should do that too. Maybe that should be in the guidelines. But then why do we have materials? Like if you don't need material design, because clearly you can build this yourself, then what do we do with this material design? Why, why do you spend billions of dollars developing this material design thing? Well, all of these apps are beautiful individually, but they, every single one of them, their developers have spent a painstaking amount of hours pushing Holo to the limit. Uh, and many of us are only on teams of one or two people. Uh, I was working on the Tumblr app, which is two people for the, almost the entire time I've been there. And the same with all my other applications. And I'm sure most of you in this room are working on extremely small teams. You don't have the time to spend doing this development, and you don't have the resources or the money. Uh, none of us have this much time to make their apps as good. And I think that's where material design comes in. Because Google has the time to help us out. And they've invested and they've created this huge Android developer team uh, working not only on the framework but the developer advocates uh, to the, the animations and the, the tutorial guys. Uh, they have a whole bunch of resources that are dedicated to making Android better, to make your apps look better. And you can almost think of all these guys, these are, all these people are just on your team. So it's not just one or two people on your team, it's the entire Google Android team that's building code to ship in your app. And we got with the new L stuff, we have dynamic shadows, which is pretty cool. We have these activity transitions that we get for free now, no longer that complicated one that I showed in the Tumblr app that probably didn't even look that special. That was months of development. Uh, now you just get this for free out of the box. Uh, we get cool reveal transitions. If you implemented a reveal transition yourself, uh, my buddy in New York, his name is Dallas, he, he probably wrote a lot of this code that you guys are using. Uh, Recycler View is a great, Thing to improve on list view because list view is terrible. Their cycle view is great. Uh, there's a I was at a talk at IO with Chet Haas and he said pretty much the reason we made Recycler View is because I never want to make another tutorial video on list animations ever again. I don't know if you guys have ever made a, a list view animation, but it's probably one of my least favorite things to do. Uh, so Recycler View really alleviates the pain points there. We get ripple states. We had a lot of stuff, I, I really don't know. I spent a lot of time in L Preview, but even still I'm finding new stuff. Uh, so this is great for us. They've given us a huge library to leverage. So material is a gift, and make sure you don't take it for granted. Make sure you use the pieces that they've built for you, because that's really what, what it's there for. It's there for you to build on top of. But don't mistake this for, for building, don't mistake this for building the application that Google wants you to build. This is just a framework, this is a base. You should be building your application the way that you want it to look, and the way that you think it should best represent your product and your company. Because at the end of the day, you're building it for you. You're not letting Google build it for you. So use them as a tool, but they're not designing your app. So what can you do today? And we're gonna say, and a lot of people ask me, you know, material design means I get to rebuild the app, right? I, does anybody want to rebuild the app? Let me tell you, I want to rebuild the Tumblr app every single day of my life. Uh, there's some really atrocious code in there. Uh, some that I wrote, some that I didn't. Uh, but man, 
this is a really terrible application to work with. So material design means a fresh start. I get to start from scratch. No, <laughs> sorry guys. You don't, you don't get to rebuild the app for material design. It's still an Android app, still uses activities, still uses fragments. Um, so yeah, it might be a good time to clean up some code. If you've got a, some janky adapter in your code, uh, if you've got some pretty janky action bar logic in there, maybe it's a good time to clean that up. Action bar is gonna be sort of disappearing with this new toolbar API. The toolbar is replacing the action bar, sort of. Uh, so everybody look forward to having really complicated code paths for KitKat and L uh, with that. A lot of things though can just be changed by modifying your theme. Just, just create an L version of your application uh, and gate the, the theme off for the, the material theme and just see what happens. And the last thing, I think probably the most important thing, is you don't actually have to change everything all at once. At Tumblr, we're doing a three-stage a three stage rollout for material design. We just had our first version go out uh, a couple weeks ago, which is a lot of padding and a lot of margining, and the things that can be done across all versions of the application. Uh, we have one that went out, uh, it's either coming out in a couple days, it's just a further iteration on the, that padding. You don't have to do this all at once. And then finally, when L drops uh, later this year, we're gonna have our, our L release with our L specific code in there. So a lot of these things can be done in stages and you don't have to do it all at once. A lot of people also ask me if they should start doing their L, their L stuff now. Should I do my material design stuff now? And that's a great question because it really depends on what state you're at and how much, how much time you have uh, and how much you can convince your, your boss that, that uh, you wanna do some sweet animations instead of building business logic. I don't think anyone's going to win that battle very much, but maybe I'll, I'll, get, uh, I'll be able to convince some people in this room. But they, the L devices, L development only runs on L devices, so unless you're running this really uh, alpha version of L preview on your phone, which I, I don't really recommend, uh, then it's going to be pretty hard for you. The emulator always sucks, we all know that. So you only get to run it on a device, and if you don't have a budget for buying Nexus 5s, then that's really not much of an option. Even still, it's, it gets very complicated because you have to have a separate, a separate build flavor uh, to make an L application, and then you're modifying your Gradle file. This is sort of what you've seen in the Google I.O. app from earlier this year, uh, which makes it pretty complicated to test and run your code, and to keep it in parallel with your production code. The support libraries are we all, we all really want the support libraries to work. I want to use Recycler View in the production app today, but I can't because you can't build, you can't build KitKat versions of uh, Recycler View without doing some pretty hacky work. So I don't really recommend that, just wait. But that's okay, because there's a lot of other stuff you can work on. I know you're all very eager, but trust me, there's a lot of other things you can work on. For example, uh, you can start adding some delight in your applications. You can start adding some interactions that are going to make your application not only feel like a newer, fresher, material designed app, materially designed application, uh, but it's going to make your users happy. So here is a, here's an example of something we call a fast reblog at Tumblr. Uh, fast reblog is just like a retweet or maybe like a share on Facebook. It's just taking this content and sharing it on your own personal graph. Uh, when we added this, Reblogs in our application doubled. Literally twice as many people were reblogging. And those people who did find it were reblogging twice as often. And what's really interesting is we never advertised that this was a feature. Fast reblog is just something that, that we wanted internally. We're like, man, reblogging is, I don't want to go to the screen and then press this other button. There's three button clicks you have to press to reblog. So we just added this for ourselves and then added an animation. If it was going to work out great, but at least we have it. Well, what's great about this is that we added some delight in the application for our users and for ourselves, and this dramatically increased some metrics that we're really concerned about at Tumblr, which is reblogs, which is engagement. Another thing that you can do is you can start identifying really what's important in your application, what's important to your product or your company. At Tumblr, uh, compose, making a new post is pretty, is pretty important for us. On the, on the left here, you can see an old version of Compose. Uh, on the right here, you can see the, the Compose version that we just come at, had come out with our material release. This works on KitKat. So this one, you might think that this is a material thing using material APIs. This is just using KitKat APIs. Really, it's just using 4.0 APIs with object animators. Uh, so you can really get started on a lot of this material stuff now. 
What's important about this compose animation though is we released it thinking that maybe it would make people post more. I don't know why, it was a, it's a bunk theory. But really what had happened is after we released it, we generated a lot of press. People were really excited when we first released that first version and then again with the second version about the iterations on our, our composer. When we had all this press, they came out with this release, our, our user installs jumped by 40%. That's a huge amount. We didn't get new posting. Our new posting pretty much stayed flat. Uh, but our installs jumped a lot. And that's something that we don't normally see with all of our other releases. So it's important when, to know that when you add special animations, when you add and take the time to put delight and cool looking stuff in your apps, people will take notice and it's gonna affect your user growth. And it'll make your existing users much happier and more likely to use your app again. Sometimes we're gonna add things and it's not gonna be easy. Those previous things I showed, that, that's not the easiest code to write. I wouldn't even show you if I could because it's an embarrassing uh, implementation. The code is really, it's pretty janky. There's a lot of if statements, a lot of null checks. Uh, yeah, this is an example of, of another thing that for us is really important. And this is sort of teaching people, it's the follow. So when you follow, we jump the avatar up to your, your home icon to sort of, to sort of hint to you that, that this blog is now in your dashboard. Now when you, now you'll see their content show up there. Uh, like I said, it's not always easy. I put up, I copied some of the code out of the Tumblr app to get this thing working. So there's an example on GitHub uh, about how precisely lame it can be to make some of these animations. You, there's not gonna be any existing API for you to do this. So for example, to do this, I, I get a reference to the decor view. Uh, I still don't really know what the decor view does or how it works, but I know you can put stuff on it. So you can attach stuff to the decor view. Uh, I calculated the path so I can animate from, from one arbitrary point to another point. Uh, and so then I do the, run this animation that's running on the decor view. And then when that decor view, or when that animation ends, I send a broadcast. And when I have the activity catching a broadcast receiver, and when that activity catches this broadcast, then it runs a scale animation on the home icon. There's just pieces of animation code littered throughout the application to get this working. Your users will never see how gross your code looks. It doesn't matter how gross it looks or how awful it is. Because as long as the end result is something that's fun, that's delightful, that's meaningful, then your users will get it and it will increase your engagement and it will make your app stand out among the rest. Uh, like I said, I put this code up here. Your mileage may vary. Uh, don't judge me on my works. Judge me on my beliefs. Uh, <laughs> So what else can you, you can spice up your transitions. That transitions are not an L specific thing. Uh, Hangouts released an update maybe about a month ago. And in this brand new, freshly designed update, they put in this gross pop and scale animation that I, that's been in every single application since they released Hollow or, or, uh, or the gingerbread design. It is so awful, no one knows what it means. No one knows where these screens are coming from. Why would they put this in a new application? Even the default transitions in L are like slide up from the bottom, which is so much better. Twitter, Twitter has a nice slide in contextual animation for their activities. No one's saying that Twitter is the best designed application in the world, but certainly they at least understand that, they're, that the contextual way of launching activities makes way more sense. So please, if, if you don't do anything else, take this out of your application today. Just put in something else, like literally anything. Uh, the, that's probably one of the worst offenders in the Android uh, design right now. And then also, you can start cleaning up your margins. There is a, material design isn't really only about margins, but it, there's, there's some consistency that you can start adhering to, and you can start cleaning up your margins, especially if you haven't paid attention to it before. And unfortunately, when you run your application on, on an L phone, or when L is released, uh, there's not gonna be a magic API that says fix my margins. It's not just going to happen magically. Your stuff is still going to be misaligned, just as it was misaligned before. So take, take a little time, work with your designer. If you don't have a designer, uh, work with your friends, or, or just get some feedback. But clean up those margins, make them look good. Uh, because you're not going to want to do it later. Because you want to do the fun stuff later when Ellen's actually out. And then the last thing you can do is, is you can start getting inspired by all the other applications on the App Store. So we talk, I talked to you a little bit earlier about what are these material designed applications? 
and people who have been doing material design for a long time, these people, these same applications, are still pushing the boundaries of not only what material design is, but what application design is in general. And you can start using any application on the App Store and see what they're doing. Everybody's doing things slightly differently, and everybody's taking different risks in different places. And so it's a great way to get inspired and feel how, figure out how you should make your app better. So as we see, there's plenty of work we can be doing in getting ready for L and making sure that our applications are, are looking beautiful and looking nice. So we covered some things today, and we sort of understand that if you're, if you're a conformist, if you're doing everything by the guidelines, that what you do is going to be forgotten. Because being a conformist leads to forgotten design. We also learned that design means much more than just a pretty picture. Design can be interaction design, product design, and graphic design. It can be all of these. And we also learned that the guidelines are inspired by people like us, like people and developers. Every single one of you in this room has great ideas and great things that we think will be cool. So the guidelines were inspired by people like us actually building those things and putting them in our applications. The guidelines are there not to build our apps for us, but to, build our, to make our apps better. So when we're making our applications, it's important to know that the material design default is not what you should be striving for. You shouldn't be striving to make the same music player or photo app that you see on the design guidelines. You should strive to take that one step further or to use what, you, use what you've been inspired with there to create something better. But please don't recreate the music player application uh, because I promise you 100 other people are going to do that. And finally, we talked about some, some pain points, some common pain points in a lot of applications that we can make our own apps better today. I'll leave you with a quote from one of my favorite designers. He says, uh, among other things, conformity and efficiency have a price, and that price is design. And hopefully what I've helped explain to you today is that we should not strive for having a conformist application, and we can get outside of our comfort zones and we can create our own APIs and our own animations and go beyond what Google has provided for us and create really unique and enriching experiences for our users. Thank you.